up against the Indonesians, the number two seeds, Gracia Poli and Nidia Krasinda Mahaswari. Now obviously with the Indonesians being the number two seeds, uh, this must be the bottom quarter of the draw, which unfortunately we're looking at the top section of the draw. But uh, this the bottom section, I can tell you in that top half, Tian Ching and Zhao Yunlei, the one. winners here Women in 2014, beaten finalists of 2012. And we're still seeing the very top section of the women's doubles draw. The Empire of the Man, Takariko Sujinaka, Japan. And the Soviet judge, Shufrey Cox, the Netherlands. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Malaysia, Vivian Kamho and Kiwi Wu. And on the other side, Nithya So the Malaysian pair, Vivian and Kiwi Wu, followed closely by the home pair led out by Nitya Krasinda Mehaswari. She and Gracia Poli, the beaten finalists last year, losing out to Tan Chin Hua and Tian Ching. So it's the Commonwealth Games gold medalists against the Asian Games gold medalists. The current world number twos. Here they are. Well, it was an extraordinary final last year. I remember the Indonesians were 11-10 up at the mid-game interval of the first game. Uh, they then lost the next 17 points to go six love down in the second game. Yeah. And the home fans will be hoping we don't have a repeat of that. Yeah, not, not a good streak. No, it was extraordinary. It was one of those matches that just sticks in my mind. Of course, the Malaysians are left and a right-hander playing together. And the left-hander is Wu Kiwei. So Nidia Karashinda Maswari, 27 years of age from Blita in East Java. Number two in the world ranking at the moment with her partner of today. Won the Asian Games gold medal in 2014 in Incheon. But you think back to under a year ago when this Indonesian pair became the first medalists at the World Championships in women's doubles for 18 years when they picked up bronze. Since then, they've become world number twos. Won the Singapore Super Series this year by default. Got a walkover in the final. So here the left-hander, Wu Ki Wei, 27 years of age, born in Salangor. 20 
on the world ranking at the moment have been inside the top 10. They were number nine on the 19th of November last year. Just one week at that career high of nine. Born in Kuala Lumpur. And I found it quite astonishing when I was doing my research earlier this morning that the Malaysians making their first appearance here as a pair at the Indonesian Open. This is the second meeting between the two the pairs. Day. The only previous meeting was in the Asia Championships earlier this year. And it was an hour and 18 minutes for that marathon. And I can tell you that Maswari and Polly's had to save two match points in that second game because they were again an 18-20 down, oh. fighting back. And, and you say it was a marathon match, but actually it was a short match compared <laughs> to the um, <coughs> eventual, um, was it semi-final or final? It was the semi-final, which was yeah. two hours 41. So it was actually only half the amount of time for mm. that match. And um, well, it also caused Maswari to miss the uh, Uber Cup. Um, in Kunshan, didn't participate on the uh, Indonesian team. And it was because of that marathon match? I think it was because of um, the sort of um, recovery from, um, from that tournament. Or played lack of it. Yeah, played three extremely long matches. <laughs> Just those two matches that we've discussed was four hours all together. Yeah. Finest the world number two ranked pair, Polly and Mahaswari. Getting this second round encounter underway. So, of One course, on paper, block. when you've got the number twos playing against the number twenties, well, you put this pair as overwhelming favourites, but I can tell you that with One Vivian Hu block. and Wung Ki Wei, not only pushing their opponents very, very close the last time they met, but the Malaysians have had some outstanding results over the years, not least, of course, in the last 16 of those Asian games, when they put out Wang Xiao Li and Yu Young, the former world number ones. Came close to a good victory um, in the Uber Cup against um, China in the group stages when they were leading 18-12 against uh, Tang Yuanting and Yu Yang. Uh, eventually lost nine points in a row and, and ended up losing that match. But that meant that um, Yu Yang didn't play uh, the decisive matches in, in Uber Cup. She was replaced by Chen Ching Chen. Great match by the Malaysians, but simply failed to close it. This Malaysian pair who have qualified for the Rio Olympics 
And he played one Super Series tournament prior to this this year. This is the fifth event of the year. Didn't play in Singapore, and there was a bit of a mix-up uh, with their tournament program earlier in the year, wasn't there? Because yeah. they were entered into two tournaments at the same same time. time. You're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to play in either. Uh, they played as an alternative um, to a program. Played a number of tournaments um, in South America. Uh, maybe a number is a bit too much, but, but a couple of tournaments, as far as I recall. Eight, four. Malaysia has qualified um, players in all categories for the Olympics. First time they've done that? Yes, I think so. I believe so too. Nine, four. Now, I told you they can play good badminton. Yeah. Ten, four. Uh, well, it might be just the start, but I don't think um, the Indonesians look very confident. Uh, of course, they play with the drift, but that's sometimes an advantage in women's doubles because you can actually uh, get your attack um, going a little bit better. That has not been the case for the Indonesians here. 11 for the advantage for the Malaysians here at the mid game interval. Indonesians looking a little bemused at the moment. Just four minutes. There we were preparing ourselves for a, a marathon. It might be yet. Yeah, it might be, but I, I'm thinking, um, knowing that Maswani didn't participate Board in the Yuba Cup, is she seconds. fully um, recovered? It's always difficult to know. She's always played with uh, a bandage or a strapping on her on her right knee, but it seems like there's both a bandage and a strapping underneath that uh, bandage here. Yeah, uh, Gracia Pons got, got strapping on as well. And we saw a service return that was within reach in her forehand side, but she wasn't really close to it. So um, let's see if. Uh, she's fully fit or it's just uh, the Malaysians who's uh, off to a really good start. Two points for Poli and Maiswani. Good return of that flick. Very, very quick attacking shot from uh, Vivian Hoop. Yeah, well played, well played. And that's what they can do from this okay. far side of the court. Six. It is possible to control the lifts. Because you're playing up against the drift. Excellent attack there from uh, Maswari and Polly. Trying to play themselves into this first game here. Trying to capitalize on the support from the audience here in Istoris and Iron. Summer. 
Good shot, good shot from Maswari. All the way cross court. Targeting Kiwemi. Yeah, she was waiting for him beforehand. Excellent placement of the smash from the Indonesian girl. Oh, what a great rally. Excellent play by both pairs, but eventually the Malaysians able to capitalize on the attack. Great drop shot from uh, Vivian Hu, and then this very well placed smash. five since the interval so at least um, the Indonesian pair has sort of uh, stopped the bleeding still in it with a chance of uh, taking this first game Didn't that touch the floor? No call from the umpire. I'm convinced it touched the floor. Yeah. work a little bit longer for that rally than they initially thought the Malaysians. It's that way back in the match for, for the Indonesians, perhaps. I think we've seen uh, Wong Ki Wei take some um, laps of honor down on the back court there when the rallies are over. Yeah, that's better. Better from the Indonesians. Yeah. Had a lot of success with their variation in the attack, the sudden cross attacks. Not 
to the middle of the two Malaysian players, but only on the other side of the body towards the sideline. It's opened up things. Some good rallies now. It's gone just long. to have a second go at it. <laughs> yeah, but that was, that was the third go, I think. <laughs> One, two, two three. three. <laughs> yes. That would have been good in uh, volleyball. of this first game I think the Indonesians have gotten hope ahead of the second game played much better since the interval and I actually think these two long rallies they have um, they've gotten to um, Kiwi Woon a little bit sense that she's a little bit tired uh, sounds strange after just two hard rallies but uh, yeah and it might be wrong of course but uh, it's just the way she walks around court oh that's good defense. That, that's fantastic defense wonderful from this opening game from the Malaysians. Oh, it's just wide. Yeah. Well, I thought for a moment, Key Way was going to ask for a challenge. Yeah. I think I might have. Yeah. Just to get a closer look. They haven't challenged in all this first game, so if I were the Malaysians, I would have liked a closer look. But. Um, Things might be not to get their rhythm interrupted, but um, now this happens anyway.
This is such an important rally. It's oh. gone on. She realised that most worry just as she's hit it. Playing with the drift. Three game point opportunities. Only needed the one. And there's a stunt silence in Estora Stadium. The home favourites, the world number twos, losing that opening game to the Malaysian combination of Vivian Hu and Wen Ki Wei. Well, if you're an Indonesian fan, you should take heart from the fact that Maswari and Polly played themselves into the match because I thought it was 4 11 down. I thought it was, uh, they really weren't into it at all. But And in no time. Yeah. Four minutes only. Yeah. So opening game, 21 17. In favour of the Malaysians. Wong Pei T, their coach. Briefly saw Heng Hian, their coach, 2004 Olympic bronze medalist with Flande Limpele. And he's done, he's done a good job with these two girls, Polly and uh, Maswari. coached them up to number two in the world. They were good before 2013 as well. They were just not really consistent. And I think that's been the big difference that they've been able to sort of um, get past these quarterfinals, semifinals, where yeah. there's been one good result on the way, been able to create one good result in the quarterfinals, another good result in the semis, and then, yeah, it's some occasions. Good finals this place well. But but they really gotta be alert here in, in the beginning of the second game because all the work they did in the second part of the first game, that's what's gonna help them now. So they really gotta be careful. Service fold on uh, Maswari. No, yeah, Maswari. I don't think that's. I agree with that one. I think the shuttle have left the racket before the racket hit, pointed up. But of course, we have the opportunity of watching the replay.
They were really targeting this lady, Maswari, weren't they? they were in, yeah. in the um, attack. And I, I think it's a good idea because normally Polly is, is more creative in her um, um, offensive uh, defense, yeah. so to speak. The, the, the creative shots that turns the defense around to offense. I think Polly is the more creative player of the two Indonesians, so. Good strategy by the Malaysian pair. We'll see if they get the attack in the next rallies, whether it's deliberate or just happened during the rally. I think they've been told to target her. I think so too. I think so too. The thing is, normally Maswana is very solid in her defense. She's just not as constructive yeah. and creative as Polly. So Malaysians might get to work real hard for their points, but they, of course, benefit from playing with the drift here. So their attack gets a little bit better bite. Yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely uh, a strategy to target oh. Maswari. Oh, great take off the top of the yeah. tape from Vivian Hu. <laughs> My goodness. Oh. Well, there was a line to kill that one. Almost hit each other, the two Malaysian players. Yeah, I did fear for them at one stage. Look at that first one. Took it beautifully. service errors is that I wonder yeah. we've seen two from the Malaysians in about the last half dozen points haven't we yeah. it's odd that uh, it's Polly who's been the more consistent server here she's been having a lot of trouble with her short service earlier oh, there we go it was two apiece on service errors Shot from Polly Gracia. Sorry, Gracia Polly. What, the first one? Yeah. The angled one? Yeah. yeah. It's really done some damage to the Malaysians when the cross smashes are there. that if the Malaysians want to come through this match and, and reach the quarterfinal, they've really got to concentrate right now. Yeah. Th there's a lot of loose shots yeah. in between some good rallies. Yeah. And it's the loose shots that is sort of keeping the Indonesians in this match. Well played. Yeah. yeah. Well played by the left hander. And I was just about to say after that previous rally, they, they mustn't go soft. And I'd like I to see the decisive movement forward there from the left hander. 
Yeah. This, this is the position where they often go soft when uh, Kiwi Wong is uh, on the back coach. Um, it might be unfair to her, but I still uh, judge her to be not in really, really good shape. Um, I do it based on her body language, based on her strappings on her knee and um, some uh, tapings down the... Um, uh, lower leg. I feel that either she's um, practicing hard so that she's a little bit um, uh, sore or injured there, or maybe she's not really uh, capable of practicing a lot uh, because of uh, knee problems and so on. At least it seems like the um, toughness goes out of the Malaysian women's doubles when Kiwe Woon is on the back court. On the other hand, they play really, really well in their favorite position with Woon at the net and Vivian Hu working at the back court. Yeah. So the Indonesians back level. Of serves. This this is exactly what I mean about yeah. being soft. close and Gracia Polly turns <laughs> and indicates out <laughs> that really needs to be stopped by the umpire you're not allowed to influence any of the Eleven court officials and that should be stumped out before it becomes a problem so again there's a stunned silence as the Malaysians have a one-point advantage from the mid-game interval here in the second game yeah. And still, I think the Indonesians, they, they should be satisfied. This is just a, a tough day at the office. They got off to a really, really bad start, but they've been playing well since the interval in the, in the second game. Perhaps not that well here in, in, uh, sorry, in the first game. Yeah. Perhaps not that well here in the beginning of the second game, but they haven't lost anything, and they've sort of... They're not seven points behind like they were in the first game, so so um, things are looking a little bit brighter. They can go out with yeah. the confidence and, and try to force a decider here. On the other hand, the Malaysians, they've got to stop these easy points from uh, slipping away. And I feel that they, they have... Um, a very, very good level with uh, Boone uh, on the front court and uh, Vivian Hu on the back court. The level in the opposite position is considerably lower, in my opinion. Well, that's not helping the Indonesian cause. Excellent job by uh, Polly.
Good rally. Yeah. Super final smash down towards the forehand side of Gracia Polly. And she still tried to defend with the backhand. That's why she made the error. Certainly asking for the court to be mopped. Yeah, there's some big gulps of air, aren't there, from Wong Ki Wei. Yeah, it's a pity we're not seeing what happened to Meswari. Well taken. Oh my goodness, good defence. We see. Now, now the Malaysians, I, I don't understand it. They, they are targeting Polly in, in the uh, attack and and they um, they are not really successful. Good shots are coming back. Look at that cross yeah. court. The explanation, of course, could be trying to play up to the left-hander. Simply drifting away from the strategy of putting pressure on Maswari in, um, in her defense, and that is costly. be the turning point. Oh, it's just going wide. Yeah, Malaysians won the point anyway. Yeah, this one, surely that one was going right. Oh, that's going long again. Yeah, unfortunately we were looking at the previous rally again. I missed that. 
couple of points are feeling crucial. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. And if we are to judge by the previous match when they had a 2018 lead and the 18-12 lead in the third game against Yang and uh, Tang Wen Ting, then I would um, suspect the Indonesians to have the best nerves in uh, a tight situation. Yeah. Suddenly, she changes her attack to Poli. And what happens? She turns it around. I think they had the good um, position, the Malaysians. They've gotten uh, Maswari targeted. It just their own attack wasn't really completely clear who was doing what, how is Vivian Hu getting back from the front court. Well, that was very interesting. Winky Wei waving her bottle of water at her coach as if to say, I need more water, which suggests that they think they're going to have to play a third game. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because she's still got half a bottle yeah, of water. Yeah. Now, the psychology of that, if I was playing against her, I would think, yippee, she's tired. Yeah. As you pointed out, though, she may be tired in that opening game. strategy is, is reasonably clear <laughs> for the Malaysians target Mahaswari actually all over the court for the Indonesians get the Malaysians to play in the opposite position with Vivian Hu at the net well plates Changing to a better racket. Outside the picture here. That's loose. Yeah. Got what it deserved. Who's got the nerve? 18 all. Oh, it's 
brilliant from Pollard. Absolutely brilliant. On that rally on her own. a shocker. Absolute shocker. Woeful serve there from Gracia Polly. Well, I posed the question. Who's got the nerve? My question has been partly answered. Yeah, well, let's see if Wong gets this into play. She does. Match point opportunity to the Malaysians. Can they convert? They failed to do so in the same position at the Asia Championships in Wuhan. Good serve. Oh, the net cards, they've done it. And broken hearts as far as the Malaysian, the Indonesian fans are concerned because the Malaysians have spoiled the Indonesian party. 21-17, 21-19 in 45 minutes. Well, 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 last year's beaten finalists, the world number two ranked pair, have departed in their home Super Series event in just the second round. Their first match of the tournament, and that perhaps paid its part because they had a bye in the first round. And maybe not the opportunity to get used to the match conditions. But all credit to the Malaysians. Yes, the delight. Through to a fifth Super Series tournament quarter final. Vivian Hu and Wu Ki Wei. Victory in two straight games. There is confirmation of that. 21-17, 21-19. And the Malaysians through to the quarter-final.
So our next match is men's singles and the number three seed, Lindan, up against the teenager, Jonathan Christie. This from the top section of the draw, top half of the draw. And you can see that Tian Haowei came through the battle of the left-handers. Mark Schwebler was in the final here.